Yerp, this is Perp, back with another video, and I finally just got done watching the first season of The Midnight Club. This is just going to be a brief talk about just what I saw over these last 10 episodes. And each one of these episodes are about like 50 plus minutes, so it's definitely a long series. Mike Flanagan, once again, is back with another horror show and i just want to kind of give you just how i feel about this what i didn't like about this the story characters and just everything overall so this is a very interesting show you know um with all these different characters when you watch the trailer you're like you instantly get are you afraid of the dark vibes but this is the midnight club and this is based off of like a Christopher Pike uh, novel or books series. I remember seeing these back in the day, like when I used to go to Barnes and Noble, but you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, this is the first time Mike Flanagan's going to do like a young adult story, which already kind of was like a red flag for me when I started to get more information but th but then I saw the rating it's TVMA so I'm like thank god it's not TV 14 because that would have just really made me disappointed but man this is a very strong show with its characters you know what I'm saying it's a very character driven type of show there are things that I don't like about this in particular uh season if they are going to do a season two it, it just kind of left it on the table we'll see how people are kind of receiving this but i really enjoy the characters let me start off with the first character we get introduced to is ayanka and she is a pivotal character throughout this first season she finds out that she has this illness i think it's cancer or something like that so she ends up going to this hospice that you know other kids just like her or other teens are going there to kind of just wait to not wait to well pretty much wait to die you know and that was the real big draw of this i feel like this show had a really strong first episode just introducing you to the story and just who these characters are what the midnight club is and what they stand for like pretty much it's all these teams that come together and these aren't the first group of uh members you know it's this goes back years there's always been a midnight club and it'd be interesting to kind of explore that like some older groups and whatnot if they decide to go down that route but they also made this pact that if one of them dies they have to come back in some way somehow to kind of reach out and tell other everybody what it's like on the other side of things and it's so brilliant how certain stories get uh brought up because that's a big factor in it that's why i kind of make that comparison to are you afraid of the dark where they tell these stories but the difference is where these aren't just stories these are like kind of personal to the individual that is telling them you know what i'm saying we got like um doppelgangers or just doubles and then we got like stalkers with hammers that's like a generational generational uh slashers that was a really interesting review um there's always this there's this black and white crime like noir type style story there's this hitchhiker type of story. There's so many different vibes when it comes to these stories. And they're so uniquely crafted to each individual character. And this is very much a dramatization first. Like, it's a, it's a drama first, I should say. And then, like, a horror second. Because we spend a lot of time building with these characters. Especially, like, characters like uh, um, Anya 
which she's definitely my favorite character and I think a lot of people's favorite characters especially with episode 7 that was an impactful episode very emotional like this is a very dark show you know for it being about like young adults like people we're talking people that are like 17 and 18 imagine just having that in your head just thinking like man i might not even make it to 19 or i might not even make it to 20 like there's so many things that you're missing out on life and i really like the message that they try to tell throughout all these individual stories and how they're just all they're personally connected to them and then that's their heart that's like a part of their story their actual story mixed with some horror and i really like that whole entire style they should have just ran with that the whole time but what i didn't like about this in particular um first season is way too many jump scares there's so many jump scares where you get tired of it by like the first episode and it's just it feels so cheap there's certain storylines as far as like what's going on with this hospice what's going on with this place why does it have this like weird why are there weird things going on why is uh yolanka able to see ghosts and stuff so you're dealing with a lot it's it's there's a lot of information with each episode but where i feel like it peaked at is episode seven when we get to eight i really like the story at eight but you know after that the last two episodes i feel like kind of really dragged not to say episode 10 wasn't a, a good way to kind of close things up because there was specific stories that were like to be continued and when you continue them it, it really has a dope closure like my favorite story that was told was the wicked heart that was kevin's story kevin is like the second person that you meet um in this story and who has a strong bond between Yola uh ilanka and also uh anya she also is a big focus and a big part of this first little season but all the characters are really important like when they like i said they spend a lot of time so if anything happens to a character or they allude to something happened to a character you care about it and i feel like regardless of my cons or my negatives of this series or this first season i think they can improve on that i think the stuff with julia you know because they get into a bunch of like cultish occultish type stuff and it gets really weird and i'm i'm curious to see where they take this if this does get a season two because i i think you could have left all that uh in season two if they were to make it because to cram all that in at the end was kind of messy i already kind of saw it coming with the nurse um i'm drawing a blank on the actress's name i think her name's like heather something she played nancy in uh nightmare on Elm street but she is a pivotal character as well kind of helping these kids kind of um get through what they need to get through you know what i'm saying but it's just it's a really sad story man I, I think everybody on the cast did a phenomenal job for what they were given i just think if you take out the jump scares the cheap jump scares um and some of the bloatedness out of the season you got a really good series you know you could have really ended it you could have really ended this whole entire series with just one but it seems like they want to kind of flesh this out and do multiple seasons which it's going to be interesting you know what i'm saying I, I wouldn't necessarily say this is on the level of hill house or even like midnight mass those are still like mike flanagan's like best works i'd put this like underneath that above and above blind manor i still don't like blind manor this has potential though i'm not gonna say it's like trash or anything there's just certain things i could see people being uh a negative or just completely tune out because there are definitely times that i tuned out while watching this and it just became like background noise the performances though is definitely what's going to keep you hooked like that first episode was really dope and 
it really did a great job of just showcasing what to expect um but yeah that's just my quick thoughts on this whole entire first season how do y'all feel about it um did it leave live up to your expectations i was disappointed with certain things but like i said if it gets a season two there's room for improvement like them just telling stories that are connected with their actual life or something traumatic that's they're trying to deal with or trying to vent they should keep that that was the strongest part about this series i wouldn't say i was necessarily creeped out or scared just because the the jump scares they needed to just cut that shit the fuck out it was not really needed you know you could have told a more effective story if you just left that goofy stuff off the table like i said hopefully they listen to the feedback and improve this has just been my quick little thoughts on the first season. Until next time, I will see y'all in the next one. Peace.